you're probably asking, like most people, well, what is this biocommunication process? How can we, how can we find out what your body is saying from thousands of miles away? And I'm going to introduce several different ways that we can do that. Uh, this all really started 30 years ago when I learned a process from Europe called German Diagnostic Electroacupuncture. There's different methods that have used of uh, uh, Vega testing and Vol testing. It really all goes back to uh, Dr. Reinhold Foll in, in the 1950s, early 1950s, uh, where he he started as a dentist, but he became a medical doctor, homeopath, acupuncturist. He just studied all the different forms of medicine in Germany, where they have five different systems of medicine at equal standing that can treat any disease. And, and trying to answer the question why, you know, in dentistry, where he started, if we have uh, an issue in a tooth, for example, and, and that take out that that problem of, from the tooth, why is it that, that maybe an arthritic symptom in a distant joint in the body, maybe a knee on that side of the body, would, would stop hurting and, and start healing? And what's the connection? What's the linkage? And that led him into acupuncture, which in Oriental medicine for 5,000 years, they've recognized these meridians or, or direct current energy channels or chi channels that communicate through the body electrically. and and and. So each tooth is on a different meridian, and those uh, those circuits in the body can can affect electrically at a, at a distance. So even within the body, we're talking about remote effects and distance effects that aren't typically recognized and and, and acknowledged and and dealt with in in uh, standard Western medicine. Um, so what happened was they were he, he developed a, an electronic circuit a uh, very simple basic circuit that, that every electronics person knows about called a Wheatstone bridge but the application was new in applying it to measuring the body so rather than measuring resistance technically now we're measuring impedance which is a similar uh, function of how electricity flows through a material, but rather than a wire that's insulated, in the body we have these circuits that are kind of like wires, but without insulation and not, not separated from each other. They can communicate with each other. And so the body biologically is able to, to reconnect and reprogram and coordinate different circuits together at different times according to its needs. And so with the uh, electroacupuncture, the diagnostic form from Germany, uh, they would measure acupuncture points before and after acupuncture treatment to find out if it really was working. And uh, so they could say, oh, this point has a low energy. It's a degenerative type of, of tendency in, in, that, in that system. And this other point has a high energy. That's an inflammatory type of energy. And they found with acupuncture treatment, with proper treatment, all of those high and low energies would come into balance at exactly the same level. There's really a coherent level of perfect balance in the body. And we find that in other systems. Like for myself, my background as an eye doctor, we know that, that visual functions, as we are born and develop our vision, that, that there's certain functions that are highly coordinated with the space around us. We're using our eyes to see that real space, and, and so uh, we develop to, there's regulatory systems that respond to that input and, and put the eye you know, in the proper focus, which isn't, isn't exactly in focus with the object, but a little bit relaxed beyond that, or how the, the two eyes triangulate and coordinate in space. And again, they have a relaxed position, relaxed uh, posture, a little bit beyond the object that we're looking at. And that allows us to be in, activated when we are, are looking at detail and processing and, you know, or under stress. We can have, we can, uh, that stress actually focuses us in a little better before it over focuses. So it gives us a little leeway in the system. But still there's that, that tendency to be really finely coordinated to a particular point in space or again with the acupuncture meridians to a particular energy flow level. So in biological systems, we have all these negative feedback loops, which is a, a positive thing biologically. It's how we regulate, how we keep things in balance. It's called homeostasis. Maybe it should be called homeodynamic because stasis means stable. Homeo means like. So it's, it's like it's stable, homeostasis, but it's really dynamic. There's really, there's always multiple loops, multiple feedbacks that are keeping things in balance, keeping it from going too high or too low, like the pH in the blood. It has to be in a fine range 
of alkalinity or we're in a coma or dead. Uh, so we have our buffering system to keep it from going too acidic primarily. It's harder for the body to buffer against too, uh, too much alkalinity, but by design, by biology, our cells are always, when they're active, they're making acids. They're making uh, carbonic acid when we burn sugar and burn proteins and fats. We produce uh, carbonic acid, carbon dioxide, as, as a byproduct. So then we're, that's the one, that's from one side, we're making acids, and then we have lots of calcium stored in our bones and uh, that we can pull out if we need to. If we're too acidic, we'll keep that blood alkaline fine-tuned to a very fine degree. Uh, so so uh, what, what was discovered in 1953 was what we call medication testing or med testing in European terminology. Uh, and that was the discovery that, that an imbalanced energy flow at measurable at an acupuncture point actually came into balance with the presence of an appropriate remedy, in this case, uh, first case it was a homeopathic remedy, but it works for, for drug remedies, for you know pharmaceutical drugs, it works for uh, herbs, home for uh, flower essences, it works even for a thought form, like an affirmation or a visualization. If that changes the energy flow in the body, you can measure it at the acupuncture point. So we can actually determine before you take a medicine, for example, hospitals in Germany and Israel, uh, that use this technology in the hospital can can select from a list of, of pharmaceutical drugs, for example, for a person with high blood pressure, which drug is more biocompatible for that person before they take the first pill. So they can avoid side effects. They can measure side effects energetically and balance those before you start taking the medication with other remedies, other other uh, types of, of uh, of uh, nutrients or herbs or homeopathic remedies, for example. So that was the foundation, but that's, again, 1950s. So we're, you know, 60 years beyond that. And uh, the work that I've been doing for all this time, 30 years since I learned this process, uh, I learned how to test people at a distance uh, from other doctors where they'd have uh, patients send in tissue samples. We'd, we'd use hair samples because that's uh, a, a real simple one. You don't have to preserve it, add chemicals to keep it from breaking down if we're shipping it from far away. But they also were using, you could use urine samples or, or blood samples other doctors were using. Uh, but basically an antenna. It's, it's an antenna to that person at a distance. And we can also use a photograph, which is what we prefer to use now, because the photograph also gives the conscious mind uh, a way of connecting with that person. We know that, for example, with dozens of studies on, on remote healing, uh, most of those studies are done with, with photographs of the person to be healed. And so the person who's doing the healing from a distance doesn't know their, the person's name or location or, or even what kind of condition they might be suffering from. But yet, the pers person who's being prayed for or intentional, receiving intentional healing uh, heals faster on, in controlled studies compared to the controls, where a photograph is taken and not used for that, that pur purpose. So, uh, in fact, in, uh, recently had a question come up in, uh, in relation to my clinical theory of everything, which is my attempt to explain how this works to myself, you know, as a scientist and, and, and doctor first, uh, because it's so fascinating to see these remote effects of healing, you know, not only diagnostically that we can to tap into your body's energy system and communication system at a distance, uh, but even in the process of the testing, we see healing happen in the person who's being tested. So it's a, it's a communication, it's a two-way flow of energy. And I wanted to mention, you know, I had that question of, well, it, has there been observation on a scientific level of the remote effect? You know, if, if I'm testing you, is there, is there some observation that's been made that can, that can confirm that, yes, there's some energetic effect at your end when we're going through that communication process? And what I found was, yes, there's, there's documentation uh, in the government programs for remote viewing. There was a lot of money spent on remote viewing and they, they documented that yes, you can view a remote place 
uh, by intending to, to, you know, going into a meditative state, intending to, to see what's there, and, and so it's been successfully proven that it works. But not only that, when they did those studies, they found that when the remote viewing was accurate, when the person was actually seeing what's in another place, that they can't see directly with, you know, the external eyes, but with visualization, with internal vision, that they could actually measure uh, energetic effects at that remote place. There's actual photons, there's electromagnetic energetic effects that are measurable at, around, at and around the location that's being seen. So, and this ties in with, with how we model vision in, in our uh, theory, the clinical theory of everything, that like the Greeks believed and, and other cultures and even actually when even today if we uh, when, when studies are done uh, just surveys of say children in grade school most grade school children if they're asked how does vision work will will confirm that they believe that vision is an outward expression of the individual that I see as a I see an image out in the world that's coming from me. I'm, I'm creating that image. And perceptually, we know that that's the case. Uh, but our conventional science has, has sort of taught us that, no, well, that can't be because we don't measure any ray coming out of the eye like the Greeks believed there was a ray coming out of the eye to the object that we're looking at. But now we can actually measure the effects of that ray. It's not a, not a ray like an a, a, a electromagnetic ray that we can measure coming out of the eye necessarily, but uh, that we can measure the effects at the place that we're looking at. In, in my theory, I suspect that it's, it's more like a, a scalar uh, information ray that may travel in reverse time. We won't go into the details of that, but in subatomic physics and quantum physics, light goes forward and backward in time. There's clear evidence of that. It's, it's you know, one of those remarkable effects at a quantum level that, that corresponds to how the mind and the spirit work you know, on, on a, a human scale. And it's the coherence of the spirit and the mind on our, our biological scale that allows these, these quantum effects to happen on a macroscopic level. So that, that's a little bit of a of little bit of uh, just sort of beginning to, to point to in the direction of you know, what we go into more, more detail uh, with the clinical theory of everything to, to really try to understand the, the science behind this. But uh, so, so yes, we can test in person and every time I test a person, have, have your body here in Hawaii. If you come to Hawaii, we will test and measure these energies at the acupuncture points. And what we'll do is we'll do that at the end of the, of the session. We'll do the other tests that we do if you're at a distance first. They're more subtle, more sensitive. Uh, and, then, and then we actually use electrons. We're actually pulling electrons out of an acupuncture point, resupplying them to a remote part of the body, and, and observing the reconnection, how that energy flow is able to find its way back to the, the point. And that can tell us when, when it comes into balance, when it starts out of balance, either too high or too low, uh, or, or unstable, where the energy flow doesn't, at first is, is there at a certain level, but doesn't continue to flow. Like the, the, that, that wire, that, that circuit, is getting jammed up by some material that's not in an ionized state. It's not in an uh, electronic state that can flow with, with the electrical flow of the meridian. So we consider that a toxin that's not ionized, but then when we, as soon as your body is, is uh, in communication with a remedy that carries the right quantum energy, the right signature, uh, the body responds to its environment all the time, just like every cell responds to its environment moment by moment. And that's what we call epigenetics, the sensory function of the cell where there's, where there's proteins on the cell membrane that receive the energy, like little antenna on the cell membrane that send signals to the DNA to tell them how to, what kind of environment that cell is in and therefore how to respond to it. Uh, so on a whole organism level, we do the same kind of thing. And the Germans who've done this work have, have uh, observed that 
that signal will travel through a, a vacuum. So it's not, it's an electromagnetic signal, not a, uh, uh, it's not, doesn't require electricity, it, but it can travel by light, by electromagnetic field. So the body's field goes out about a centimeter, and that's about how far out, uh, at least on, say, a, a Curlian photograph. You put your finger on a Curlian photogra uh, photographic plate, you're on high uh, voltage, high frequency um, current through, through that field, and the, the uh, electrons will flow according to the field energy around that fingertip, and you can there's a uh, system of, of reading those energies that corresponds to the acupuncture point readings.